Hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at a button shy game called Wonder Tales. This is, of course, a tiny little wallet game uh, for two players in which we are going to be drafting cards, treating them like tiles, and playing them out onto a grid, trying to score the most victory points. You'll be playing a, a best two out of three rounds style game with these characters having two sides one side for the blue player one side for the red player, both identical, just denoting who played the card, and then having scoring opportunities on them. This wants to be next to uh, the piggies. Uh, the, you know, Hansel and Gretel want to be next to each other. The, the baby bear and the mama bear and the papa bear all want to be together. Goldilocks wants to stay away from them. That kind of thing. The hunter, you know, Little Red Riding Hood, what have you. So let me go ahead and give you a look at how the game looks on the table. I'll play a quick game out for you, then we'll come on back up here. I'll tell you what I think of it. To set up the game, we're going to shuffle up the deck of cards right here. We've already decided who the blue player is and who the red player is. I'll be blue. Player sitting across from me will be red. We shuffle these up and everybody gets two cards, which they'll put in front of themselves, making sure to flip it if it needs to be uh, flipped in order to show your color. We'll put the deck aside. We are ready to begin. The game is going to be played as a best two out of three. So it might be three rounds, it might just be two. During the first round, we're going to be making that pattern on the table, five by three. And uh, blue player is going to start, all right? Uh, and if there is a tie for scores, then the tie goes to the red player. So I will start on my turn. I will draw a card like this. I will then look at my cards and play one out. Now the parameters of this pattern are not decided upon when I introduce the first card. It's merely when the edges are defined that we know, okay, we can't grow anymore, but those things aren't set in stone when we begin. So right now I've got Hansel over here. He gets plus three points if he's next to Gretel. That's good. Minus two next to Stepmother, minus five next to the Witch. She gets points for being next to Hansel. For uh, stepmother and witch, same thing, negative points there. And then the princess gets plus one per neighbor. Doesn't care about the color unless it says so, okay? That's true for everything unless they specify they do not care. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce then uh, this one into the play. And then my opponent will go drawing a card, flipping it if necessary, and playing uh, one to the pattern we are creating here. So they've got Little Red Riding Hood. Plus two next to Grandma, plus one next to the Woodcutter. Goldilocks, who gets plus three if she's not connected to any of the bears. And then the Little Pig over here, plus one next to the Woodcutter, minus five next to the Big Bad Wolf. So my opponent will perhaps uh, introduce a uh, Little Red Riding Hood, put it right there. So and now we're beginning to create this pattern. Comes back to me, I grab the Witch, who says, after playing, swap this card with a neighbor. Okay, I'm going to play Hanzo, I'm going to put him right there. Like so. Then my opponent will go reveal, or take rather, uh, the next card. A uh, little pig, so this is a couple of pigs here. They're going to try to get those connected. And perhaps they'll do uh, this one. Put this one right here. Comes back to me, and this continues until the pattern is over. So there we go, we are done playing now. You'll see we have some cards left over and then we score everything out here. So the blue player, for example, you want to go through it and go, okay, Woodcutter, next to Hansel, that's two. Next to Gretel, no. Next to the Stepmother, no, so two. Next to Gretel, well, that's another three, so five. Stepmother, witch, no. Fred neighbor, so I'm at five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one over here, 10, 11, no stepmother. Yeah, I lose two points for that, so I'm back down to nine, and I'm not next to the witch. Per neighbor, nine, 10, 11, and this, all three piggies are connected. They are, so I am at six, uh, 16. Red player will do the same thing, and then whoever has the highest score scores that round. You don't actually need to keep track of the score. If I, if I have a higher score at 16, then it's just my round. And we shuffle up and play again, noticing that the pattern for the second round is different. And if we need a third round, that will be different. And again, whoever wins two rounds first is going to be the winner of the game.
First of all, let's start with the production, the look, the quality of the uh, actual components here. I think it's superb, and that's true for pretty much every button shot game I've ever played. Their wallets are very well made. I've never had one of these break on me, get flimsy, none of that. The card quality, excellent. And then the graphic design and artwork on these is so, so good. I just love how good these cards look. And they liven up the game, honestly. They make it a, a more of a pleasure to play because everything is so dreamlike, so whimsical, so lovely. The gameplay itself has a, a little more teeth than I expected. It's a little meaner than I thought it might be at first from just kind of reading the, the cards and understanding how the game was going to play without actually playing it. And then upon playing it, I thought, ooh, okay, there's a little stabbing here. There's a little, you know, switching cards to mess you up, sticking something next to you that's really going to hurt you. Coupled with, of course, a lot of luck. You, The order in which those cards are going to come up in the shuffled deck is fully random. So yes, there is a solid amount of luck. It, it feels very tactical, very reactionary, which is fine for a game that is 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I really did enjoy it. I had a great time with it. I think it's one that's, uh, again, it joins, for me personally, a growing collection of these incredibly portable, lightning-fast games that are fun to bring out in just about any setting, throw it down for about 10 minutes, and have a fun time. Are they the most strategic games, the most fulfilling of meals? No. They're a quick snack. But this one manages to be a very, very fun snack with, like I said, lovely artwork, a nice back and forth, uh, and some, some fun thought as you decide where you want to put something where you can perhaps protect one of your cards from something your opponent might try to do, um, and ultimately try to get those patterns to work out the way you want them to work out. So I like this one. It's certainly one I recommend for uh, two players, and again, it's two players only. I believe there are expansions that exist to make this a solitaire game. Haven't played any of that. But as a two-player game, really neat. Uh, and if you don't want something too strategic and you're willing to give up for that, uh, you know, um, or give that up, rather, for a quick game and a lovely-looking one, then this is a winner right here. For me, I'm going to come down at a 7.5 on this one. It joins some of my favorite games from Button and Shy. And it's one that will be sticking around in my personal collection. So there you go. That is Wonder Tales 7.5 from me. That's a seal of approval. And that's going to do it, folks. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.